The House Judiciary Committee recently held a public hearing on a bill you have to strengthen a measure already on the books that would require certain felons to register as firearm offenders. Tell us how you hope to improve the law. Back in 2013, one of my former colleagues that approved the existing statute, and under that existing statute, um, any judge would have the discretion to require a felony firearms offender to register as a, as a felony firearms offender, and that would give our law enforcement officers more tools when it comes down to their personal officer safety, and also holding these repeat gun offenders uh, accountable to their crimes. The problem with that underlying statute was the fact that being how the judges did have that discretion, over the past few years there's been about 1,200 offenders that would have been eligible to go on that registry, but only 86 um, actually did get registered as firearms offenders. So my thought there is that we need to, uh, if we're going to have this tool in place, we need to actually use it. So what are the crimes that would qualify for a convict being required to register as a firearm of a felon? Under my new bill that was introduced and heard in the Judiciary Committee yesterday, it would have to be a crime against a person for them to be required to file as a firearms offender. So a crime against a person like a sex offense, anytime you use a gun against another person, and it would have to be a felony. So any, any crime of assault, robbery, a sex assault, um, crimes against children, anything like that that was in, in using a gun. What would you say to citizens who might be concerned this may be just a gun registry bill? Well, th that's the fact that this gun registry bill focuses clearly on the offenders, on, on people who would use guns against other people. So it's not just a broad registry bill on individual citizens and, and people who are good citizens and not committing crimes. This is only against felons who would use a gun against another person. And, the, and another great uh, point that I want to make here, John, is that I have the NRA on board, the National Gun Alliance is on board, law enforcement groups across the state are on board with this bill. And what this bill really does is it just takes the permissive language out um, that makes it optional for, for judges to, to make people to register and makes it mandatory in those situations where people have used a, used a gun against another person. So um, the improvement to my bill is specifically related to those people who would use guns against others. Well, speaking of the National Rifle Association and gun advocates, it seems there's been quite an assault in the legislature this year against legal law-abiding gun owners. Can you talk about that? Oh yeah, indeed. You know, there's been uh, there were four different bills heard in the in the Judici House Judiciary Committee just last week, and these bills would do anything from from taxing individual rounds of ammunition, um, all the way up to complete bans on um, high capacity magazines or uh, what people commonly refer to as assault rifles. And most of these bills we need to understand are coming from Seattle centric uh, legislators who are up for reelection, and bills like this, frankly, just kind of speak to their base. And um, I'm completely against anything that's going to further infringe on our Second Amendment rights. And, uh, and I'm always going to be an advocate for um, good law-abiding citizens who happen to own guns. You're a law enforcement officer, so what is the solution? So I really believe that the solution lies within our, within our social uh, safety nets that we have to have in place out there. We have to focus on um, addiction. We have to focus on mental health laws. And we have to focus on those social values that are, that are being lowered almost on a daily basis that, that really kind of uh, break down the family and um, elevate gun violence. So we need to focus on those things when it comes down to guns. If people have questions or want to be involved, what should they do? So if they have questions of me, please call me anytime. I can be uh, called on the hotline or at my desk here in Olympia, or you can contact me via email. And the, my email address is showing up at the bottom of your screen right about now. Um, I, I always value the, the communication that I receive from my constituents, so please reach out.